Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited that you are here with me in this presentation. My name is Tanya G. Marshall. I am a teacher and a writer. And online I'm known as the Butterfly Teacher. If you can't tell by the title of this screen, our presentation is called Reclaiming My Time. We are going over simple but effective ways to save time on grading, grading all that wonderful student work. <laughs> so let's dig right in. But first I wanna go over just a few housekeeping things for this presentation. Number one, I want to apologize that my face is not on the screen. <laughs> my plan was to have my face over here in this little corner where you see that white butterfly teacher circle. However, we are having some really major thunderstorms in my area right now as I'm speaking, and that has had a major impact on my network system. So this is the third software that I am using to record and to go over this presentation with you. So I apologize that my face is not on the screen. And that also has an impact on the sound quality. So I really hope that as we go through this presentation together, that you can hear every single thing that I say clearly. If you happen to hear some rumble tumble in the background, that's that thunder. It's really, really loud. Um, and so I just wanted to go over those two housekeeping things before we dig into our wonderful presentation. Here I am on the screen and in my classroom. I just want to tell you a little more about me. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Tanya Marshall and I have been a classroom teacher for 10 years now. I've actually taught a variety of grade levels in those 10 years um, and not in this particular order. But I have taught second grade for three years. I taught fourth grade for four years. And I also taught a combined sixth and seventh grade language arts and social studies class for three years. <laughs> um, I am actually transitioning again as we head into the back to school season. I will now be a full time ESL teacher, an online teacher, actually. So I've gonna, I'm going to share some different ways to save time on grading, and I've used those techniques in all of the different grade levels that I've taught. So I hope that there's something here for everyone, even for high school teachers. Although I've never taught high school, I hope you find some nuggets here also. And then I am a writer and a blogger over at the website, thebutterflyteacher.com, where I love talking about ways to be more organized, I enjoy researching ways to be more efficient and effective as a teacher, and so I share those tips and freebies and techniques with other teachers. And last but definitely not least, I am a mom. I am a very happy mama to a very energetic nine-year-old boy. He's nine going on 35. <laughs> he definitely keeps me on my toes, and with motherhood, teaching, writing. I am a busy person. As you probably can definitely relate, you are a busy creature. Teachers are just busy. And we are always on the lookout and the hunt for ways that we can save time. So let's jump right into our agenda. Here I am again in my classroom with my little classroom library behind me and my class iPad cart beside me. I love using technology in the classroom. But let's talk about our agenda. We're gonna first briefly touch on why we even need to take grades in the first place. And that's important because if we don't have a clear why for taking grades, that's gonna affect the how. If we don't really know what the grades are being taken for, um, then we're going to have a hard time finding systems that are efficient for us. So we're going to touch on that. Then we're going to talk about general ways to save time with grading that don't involve technology. Self-evaluations, peer evaluations, and rubrics are just three ways that you can save time on grading without using any technology. 
But the meat of this presentation will be ways to save time on grading with tech tools. I'm going to talk about Plickers, Seesaw, and Zip Grader specifically as our three main tech tools for ways to save time on grading. And then I'm going to offer some extras at the end plus our wrap up. Why do we even need grades in the first place? Well, number one, we need grades to communicate. Communicating with parents, with our students, about their progress is the reason why we need to take grades in the first place. Track progress is the second reason why we are grading. Grades help you to see what teaching methods are working versus what's not really working to impact your student learning. And that's very important because we need to make tweaks along the way with our students and their learning process. And then we also use grades for our planning purposes. Now this is not teaching to the test. That's not what I'm referring to. But I am definitely saying that grades drive instruction. Assessment helps us to figure out whether what we're teaching is fitting our student needs. We are going to keep these three things in mind as the foundation for our grading um, efficient systems for today. And I'll refer back to these three reasons for why we are even grading in the first place to help us to find ways to save time because it is important. Without using any technology, here are just some general ways that you can save time on grading your student work no matter what grade level you are in. The very first one <laughs> is not to grade every single thing. I'm not trying to be Captain Obvious here, but if you really want to save time with grading, then decrease the amount of items you have to grade. I like to use the analogy of an athlete or um, a musician, someone practicing a skill over and over and over. They're just trying to develop their, that skill in preparation for a game or recital or some other big event, right? Um, your students are the same way. So if, if going back to the athlete or the musician, their coach is going to make tweaks along the way as they practice so that their practice can be maximized and that is what your job is as a teacher so grading every single thing is gonna make it harder for you to communicate with your students and parents it's gonna make it hard for you to track progress accurately because if every single thing that they do is graded your results are going to be skewed so how can you save time on grading don't grade every single thing uh, the second way is to allow for self and peer evaluations. And I have used these across the different grade levels that I've taught. Second grade, fourth grade, middle schoolers, they can be trained and they can be effective teachers to each other. They actually enjoy being the teacher. So you just train them to evaluate each other's work in a kind, respectful way you train them to evaluate their own work, which saves you the time on grading because now they are a part of the grading assessing process. And then that leads to rubrics. I also use rubrics a lot, especially as a language arts and social studies teacher with middle schoolers. I wanted my students to be as independent as possible. I taught four periods of students and I remember very clearly having 60 papers to grade. So if you use rubrics, if you use evaluation systems, that will definitely help you save time on grading and it's a win-win because your students are taking ownership of their work. And yes, this works with early elementary students as well. So. I would love to talk in more detail about those general ways that you can be efficient as a teacher. Um, but for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to move on to our tech tools. 
If you are interested in rubrics or how your students can use evaluations, if you're interested in any of those general policies that I just talked about in the previous slide, head over to my Facebook page because I often will find rubrics, I'll find evaluation forms and articles, lots of resources, and I share them with other teachers for free on my Facebook page. So go over there and like that page and you may be able to find more details today on those general ways that you can save time on grading without using any tech tools. Now for our meat and potatoes. We're going to head into our first way to save time on grading to be more efficient with student work and that's using a tech tool called Plickers. I absolutely love Plickers. I have used it across many grade levels. I even use Plickers whenever I am doing teacher trainings and professional development opportunities because Plickers just works. It records responses in a very quick way and I'm already getting excited and probably jumping ahead of myself so let me slow down. What are Plickers? Plickers is a free QR code system that allows students to answer questions anonymously. It will instantly record their answers for you. So what and how does it record your answers or record your student answers? You do need a smartphone and it can be Android or iOS if you use Apple. Um, but you do need a smartphone so that you can download their free app and you also use this in conjunction with their web-based system and I'm going to take you straight to their website in just a few moments to show you the setup and how to set up an account if you don't already use Plickers. But here I'm going to show what Plickers look like. So on the left, these are Plickers from my classroom. I glue pops, my Plickers to popsicle sticks because I don't want my students' fingers covering up that black portion. That black QR code is what I am scanning to record their answers. That's how I'm able to get a recorded grade so quickly. And I have found um, with students all across grade levels, this happens with my younger kids and older students, that they just would cover up those black QR codes and then that affected the scan. So I just glued my plickers to popsicle sticks. And these plickers can be downloaded from the website for free. And I'm going to show you where to access those. I cut my plickers to size to make them easier to fit on the popsicle sticks. And I laminated them for durability. The downside of laminating is you'll notice that top plicker in the corner. The light shining off that plicker creates a glare. And I've tried turning the lights in my classroom off to get rid of the glare, but then that can also affect your phone being able to scan quickly. So I solved this problem by going to Lowe's, you can go to Home Depot, Walmart, wherever, and buy a can of matte clear uh, spray paint, <laughs> just some matte clear spray paint. And I spray painted my flickers with that matte spray and voila, boom bada bing, no more glare. So the four that you see with no glare have already been sprayed. I was in the process of doing that when I took this picture. And that solves your glare problem. And I'm going to again go to the website to show you where you can get those if you don't already have them. And then here on the right, you can see that I store my clickers in a file folder, which makes it easy for access and organization. And they all fit very nicely there even with the popsicle sticks glued to them, um, which is totally optional. You don't have to glue popsicle sticks, but again, I just did that to make it easier for my students to hold them up for me to scan. Um, and before I head to the Plickers website, I just want to mention that I've written an entire blog post about using Plickers in my classroom, and I also have a free guide that you can download if you head to thebutterflyteacher.com. But without prolonging it, let's go straight to Plicker so that you can see the magic in action. Here's their website. And I'm going to scroll down the front page of their website to give you a snapshot. There you'll see this little phone. 
This is what your phone will look like when your students are taking a test or doing a lesson, an activity, a review, a quiz, whatever you want them to do, you will come here to this website, www.plickers.com. You will set up an account, and here at the top, they will usually have a button right here that says sign up. Oh, there it is. You'll sign up there. I don't know why it's invisible maybe because I'm already signed up so it's not giving me the option to sign up again but once you sign up you will go over into the library and I'm gonna show you my Plickers library and as you can see I have used this with different subject areas I even use it for different activities and training um, just as I mentioned I had an icebreaker activity with my staff so we did first day of school questions. I even use Plickers as a Sunday school teacher, so that's why I have a Bible review folder there. On the Plickers main page, I'm going to click here. Oh, I'm sorry, let me take you back to my library because I did tell you that I would show you where to get the cards. And here we go. Here are your free Plickers cards that you can have printed in different numbers and different sizes. If you don't want to go through the trouble of laminating and spraying with a matte spray, then you can just buy your Plickers card off Amazon already made for you. And I'm going to click on it so that you can see this is what a Plicker looks like. It's a big old QR code. And it's numbered which is great because I number them for my students to keep their names and identities hidden. And I love it that you cannot cheat with Plickers. Your students cannot look to see what their neighbor is holding up because every one of these has a different shape. So they can't copy whatever their neighbor is holding up, which makes grading very accurate. It helps me to really capture what my students know and don't know, which goes back to why I'm grading in the first place. They have uh, multiple choice options, A, B, C, D, and your students will just rotate this flicker so that whatever answer they want to give, that letter is sitting on top. Capiche? Now into my library, you'll be able to see that I've used flickers for different subject areas. I have math and phonics lessons for my second graders. You can upload images. You put the answers in. And then when you want your students to respond to whatever questions you've typed, whatever lesson you created, you go to live view. And it's blank here on this screen because this is going to be projected to your class through whatever projector system you use. Now I had a smart board. I have also used a Mimeo bar in my classroom before and this works great with either system. And then you pick up your handy dandy smartphone. Again, I wish my camera, my face was in this little corner so that I could show you through the app that you open that free app and you scan your students' clickers and bam, it instantly grades their responses, puts it in a report for you, and now you have that to communicate with parents and to students and to plan instruction. It is a very efficient system and one of my favorite ways to save time on grading. My next favorite handy dandy way to save time with grading it's through a free tool called ZipGrade. I have used ZipGrade for so many years. Very similar in some of its features to Plickers. So ZipGrade is also um, a free web-based tool, but also an app. You can have it with Android or iOS devices. ZipGrade also gives you um, its own recording sheet. It's not a QR code like Plickers. It's actually a sheet that looks like this. It's a multiple choice sheet, something that looks very similar to a standardized test sheet. And you print these from the ZipGrade website for free. 
you can customize them. So if you don't want to have 20 questions, you can have different, a different number of questions. Uh, one of the downsides for ZipGrade is that it does have to be a multiple choice activity, um, which is fine because your students are going to be taking multiple choice assessments all throughout their lives. So it isn't going to hurt for them to practice filling in those bubbles. But it doesn't allow you to do open-ended activities where you can really assess for higher level thinking unless you build those into the questions. Um, I also consider it to be a downside that the questions cannot be listed on the same page where your students are filling in bubbles. But again, that's a format that's very um, frequent on standardized testing, so I didn't see any um, negativity with my students when they use the zip grade sheet. I'm going to take you over to their website now. I am already logged into my account, but I can definitely take you up here to their main page first to show you that you would create your own account, logging into ZipGrade. Here's my account that I've already logged into, and you get a hundred free scans a month, so you don't have to pay for those. And I found that to be plenty of scans for what I needed as I taught. But if you end up trying this and you love it and you want more than 100 scans per month, then you can buy an extended subscription, which is only $6.99 a year. And I think that's really great for the entire year. And then you get unlimited scans with ZipGrade. So here are the answer sheets that we talked about downloading. You can choose from their standard forms or you can customize your sheet. Down here is the customization button. I'm, I'm going to give you an example. I use these often with math tests or vocabulary assessments and I would create the questions through the quizzes section, set up my class. I also can set up quizzes inside the app on the phone. You can create tags if you want to have certain features of the tests record things for you, let's say you want to know about a certain question that you put in, how your students generally respond, then you can set up tags within the mobile app to edit, to tag certain things. And ZipGrade will remember those tags and will record them for you. And then, in, you know, just like with the similarity of Plickers, once your students fill in their bubbles on the answer sheet and they turn it in, just like they would any other activity or assessment, you pick up your phone, you open the ZipGrade app, scan this multiple choice sheet that they provide you, and in seconds, it, go, it goes ahead and it grades your students' work for you. And then you just record that in your grading book, and now you have a very quick way to take an assessment and to measure how your students are doing. It doesn't have to be a test. I've used these for review. We have even used these in centers. My students loved this so much. They thought, how cool that you can give me my grade as soon as I'm finished. Um, you know, that's that instant gratification. They want to know, how did I do on the test? How did I do on that sheet? How did I do, Miss Marshall? And so they loved using it themselves. I taught them how to use it. And in small groups or in my center activities, my students would scan their own papers, and they enjoyed doing that. So that gives them ownership of a part of the grading process, which saves you more time. Um, and I love ZipGrade for those reasons. It has a few downsides, but overall, it's a very efficient way for you to save time with student work. My last tech tool is Seesaw. Seesaw is a wonderful free system for teachers. It is an app and also a website that can be used. <clears throat> a little different from Plickers and ZipGrade, there isn't a scanning feature you're not going to scan anything with your cell phone. Um, but let me go ahead and take you straight over to Seesaw. 
so that you can see its difference. Again, you sign up for free. They have a pricing option up here because if you buy a membership, you get more advanced features. It has so many activities in their activity library. Now, I will say for Seesaw that you do have to have access to some type of technology. Either your class needs to have their own iPads, their own Chromebooks, or you can maybe use these in a school computer lab. But Seesaw needs to be used on devices. Each student needs to have a device. Um, I remember when I first used Seesaw, we did not have a one-to-one -one classroom. So I just used these in groups. And I just gave an iPad to different groups. And it worked well. So as you can see here, it works on any device, shared or one-to-one, -one, and it's free for teachers. It helps you communicate grades with families. That's our number one reason for why we grade in the first place. And I'm just going to jump right into it right here. Some videos and examples. If you want to come onto their website, it shows videos of different teachers using Seesaw in the classroom and how Seesaw works for them. Okay. So here's my account, and I want to show my class. Let's see if I head over here to, yep, here it is. Here's my class, Miss Marshall's fourth grade class. And my the slate has been wiped out clean, so it makes it is all my students have zero beside their names. Once I upload my students, I just go here to students. I can give them a QR code that they scan. And that is how they enter my so-called classroom on Seesaw. So if your students don't have and don't have individual email address addresses that they can use to type in to log in, that's perfectly okay because they can scan here. The other thing that I did was I had a class code. And I would put this class code on the board. And they would enter this class code as kind of like their password to get into the activity. And it did not have to be, they did not have to have an email address again. But the cool thing about it is that I would go in and I would upload my activity. If you don't want to start from scratch, Seesaw has a wonderful library full of activities already made. And you can see here as it's loading lots of activities. The reason why mine is saying just fourth grade is because that's the last grade that I taught is fourth grade. And you can see that there are so many fourth grade activities, lessons already made. I really love this family open house activity. And you can browse by grade or subject. You put those activities in your own library, and that's how your students will have access to them. So if I go back to my class, I see my students. I can see activities that I have uploaded. I can even see which students have or have not completed certain activities. I can also schedule activities so I've used Seesaw when I was absent and had a sub. I gave the sub the, the instructions, and all he or she had to do was give the students the code, and then I scheduled for it to appear. When it comes to grading, what Seesaw does for you is the, the students will work their activities, and then Seesaw compiles reports and saves all of it inside the app. From there, you can send the graded responses to families. You either print out the paper invites for them to sign up, or you send it in an email. And then parents can see what their students have done and how their students have done. And that's a game changer, because now your students will know that instantly their work will be saved and sent to their families and to their parents. If you are very new to Seesaw and you're wondering, you know, oh no, these tech tools, this is a huge learning curve for me, I'm not sure if I can do this, Seesaw offers a library that is 
stocked full of free training, free lessons, free resources that teachers can access anytime. And that's quite honestly how I learned all the, the different things Seesaw could do. So I just want to encourage you to head there. Don't be shy if you've never used it before. You can really find some amazing ways to save your time, not just with grading, but also with planning, since there are so many activities already created for you. Extra, extra. Just have a few extras here before we get to our wrap-up section. Um, Google Forms is another really efficient system that I've been using for grading. You do need a Gmail account, which is free to set up. And you don't have to have a full Google Classroom suite in order to use their Google Forms. So once you get onto Google Forms, you can create your quiz, your activity, your lesson. And just like with Seesaw, you give your students access to the quiz. And once they complete it, your, the Google system will grade your responses for you. It's very quick and efficient. Flubaroo is another text system that saves time with grading. It's actually a Google Chrome add-on. It's free, just like with everything else I've mentioned in this presentation. You create a quiz in Google Forms and then your Flubaroo add-on will compile and grade your student work for you. It will create a spreadsheet that organizes all of your student responses. And my favorite thing about uh, data tracking, if I create a quiz and every one of my students misses, let's say, number 12, well, the Flubaroo system will automatically flag that for me. It'll flag it by putting it in a different color. And the spreadsheet will show the color. And that will help me to see, okay, then that means something was wrong with number 12 and not necessarily my student's understanding. Or it could be that maybe I taught something in a way that my students didn't get. So now I need to go back and look at my own instruction. And that's why we grade in the first place. That goes back to grades helping to drive instruction. So I really love that these two systems create spreadsheets and forms and reports for me so that I, because I'm a visual learner, that helps me to see, okay, when I'm grading, this is what my students did and this is what I need to do next. Woo, that was a lot of information. Does it feel like you just drank from a water hose? <laughs> I know when I go to a presentation or a conference and so many details are being thrown at me at once, it can just feel overwhelming, honestly. So with, um, we talked about Plickers and we talked about ZipGrade. We talked about Seesaw. I mentioned Google Forms. I mentioned Flubaroo. And just with those five things, it can feel like a lot that a lot has been presented in this little presentation. So I just want to wrap up with a few key points here. As you take a deep breath and relax and you think through, okay, what am I going to use? How is this going to work? I need to plan. I would say that number one, don't try everything at once. Choose a tech tool that I mentioned today and familiarize yourself with it. Try it out. Measure how well it helps you save time with grading. If that particular one doesn't work well for you, try another one. Or if it works, eh, kind of, kind of, build on it and help it to grow. Any learning curve is going to require some time. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some time. And you'll get the hang of it. And I know what you're thinking. Wait, I'm in here to save time, <laughs> which is true. But you're going to have to learn in the beginning, and I promise you, you'll catch on very quickly. So the second thing I would recommend is to set a goal for yourself for how much you're willing to devote to grading every week. And challenge yourself to stay near that goal. What is your time frame? How many hours would you realistically like to grade work every week? And hopefully the number is low for you. It's a low 
amount of hours and then challenge yourself to stick with it. My third key tip is to have fun. Have fun. If you are giving your students work that is enjoyable, then you will enjoy grading it. And that's an ironic concept because <laughs> grading just doesn't sound fun. But if you have fun with planning and assessing and learning with your students, then it's a win-win for everyone. I have so deeply enjoyed sharing with you these different ways that you can be a more efficient teacher when it comes to grading. And I really, really hope that you are able to find some nuggets here in this presentation that will help you on your journey to saving time in your classroom. Um, because I am such a busy little bee, this is something that I'm very passionate about, saving time. I so clearly remember spending 60, <laughs> 70 hours a week doing teacher work in the classroom. And so that's why I am here. That's why this presentation was created and that's why the Butterfly Teacher exists. So be sure to hop over there to check out some more detailed posts on ways to be efficient and effective. And if there was something that I didn't clarify or you have more questions, would you please email me at Tanya at thebutterflyteacher.com. I really enjoyed spending time with you in this presentation and I thank you so very much for your precious time. Thank you very much and have a great, great day.